as you can see by the title of this video i am on my honeymoon and it is night one as you can see i got a very dodgy tan like very very dodgy i've obviously got makeup on now but there is a whole like line here which we're just not going to talk about we're going to hope that it evens out but this video is kind of dedicated to the books that i read on my honeymoon and i do have quite a lot with me <music> I'm purely mood reading this holiday but I feel like I brought enough books with me to be able to do that and I also have my Kindle with me so if I'm really not feeling any of the books that I brought with me I can obviously get it on Kindle which is just a really nice option to have. The first book that I'm reading is called The Ministry of Time and I'm really really enjoying this one so far. It is a little bit of a slow start but once you get into the story it is so good. The main concept of this book is basically that the government has figured out time travel and it is the 21st century so we're in like modern time but is it the government? I don't really know if it is the government but it's like the ministry that's what they call themselves so they bring people back from history to the 21st century and the main girl in this she is called what are they called? Why am I forgetting everything about this book? I, I'm really enjoying this. I just forget things about books quite a lot. But basically she is a mentor for one of the guys that is being brought back from history. So he is a polar explorer, which I think he's from like the 1700s. So he's being brought back and it's basically how he fits into society in today's world. But there definitely is something going on in the background, which our main character doesn't know. But there's just definitely something sketchy. It's obviously all playing with the time travel and I just really find that theme so so interesting. I haven't really read a book like this before. I don't think I've read any time travel books but I just feel like this one is done so well and I think I will finish it tomorrow. I got up to page 203 I think. I was definitely taking my time but as I said it is quite slow to get into but I'm just really loving the writing style. It is so good. You can just like tell with this book that the author knows what she's doing but yeah I'm gonna finish this one tomorrow and I will update you with my opinions and stuff. I do have a lot of cowboy romances with me this holiday so I'm really excited to get to the romances. This one there is a bit of a romance so really loving that aspect of it as well but as I said it's just the writing in this book is literally beautiful like I am just in love with it so far. It's really giving like four star maybe five star material but we'll see tomorrow and yeah I'll take you along with me this honeymoon. We are here for two weeks so I'm just hoping that I get quite a lot of books read. We are very much like going to be adventuring out into the town and just like seeing where we are but we're also going to have those like relaxed beachy kind of days too so they will be the days I read probably the most but yeah tomorrow's going to be one of those days and I am planning on finishing this book so I will let you know whenever I have more opinions. yesterday and I really enjoyed this book. I gave it overall a four star and it, the only reason it wasn't a five star is because I pretty much guessed what was going on the whole time and I don't know if it was the kind of book where it was meant to be a huge twist but I feel like it could have been but I just was really on the ball with the whole time travel thing. I was just guessing a load of things and I was right with one of them. Yeah, it didn't like make the book any worse at all. I thought this story was so interesting and I haven't like read a book like this before, which I really, really enjoyed. I would love to read more of her books. I know it's her debut, which is just insane to me because the writing is so good. And I'm really excited about what this author brings out next because yeah, her writing was amazing. For some reason, it reminded me of the kind of writing style in Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and a lot of people have compared this book to that book which I'm guessing it is because of the writing style because the stories are just not the same at all but I just got that same feeling and I loved that book so much and yeah I really really enjoyed this. I recommend it so much. I took off the like dust jacket but 
I'm obsessed with what it says on the inside as well. I'm not sure if all of the copies have that, but yeah, it's an amazing book and I'm so glad that I finally read it. I then picked up, as you saw, the Hotel Nantucket and I think I'm about 100 pages into this and I am loving it so much so far. There's something about the way she just story tells that is amazing it just really hooks you into the story and i feel like i can imagine the characters like whenever i think about this book it's almost as if i've watched it on tv if you know what i mean basically this one follows a few different storylines but they all revolve around the people who are working in the hotel nantucket our main girl i guess is the general manager and she is called lizbeth i think that's how she pronounced her name her name is elizabeth but she goes by lizbeth and basically she is the manager of a new hotel, the Hotel Nantucket, which has just been done up and everybody's kind of invested in it because this is kind of known to be the haunted hotel. It was very, very run down for a lot of years. And this new guy, Javier, I think that's how you pronounce it. He is a billionaire that everybody knows and he has just bought this hotel over, done it up completely. And he's really, really adamant to get a really good five-star review from this one reviewer called Shelley that basically does that as a living like she goes around to the hotels but she's known to be very very strict so there's that wee storyline going on but then you also see glimpses into the lives of the staff members and it looks like from what I've gathered so far all of them have this kind of deep rooted dark secret I don't know if they're all connected I don't think they are but they definitely all have something to hide and the other really really interesting thing about this book is that there's actually the perspective of the ghost that haunted this hotel so obviously it was known to be a haunted hotel nobody i guess would know for sure if it's haunted but you actually get the perspective of the ghost and her story is so interesting she is hilarious in this book like i just think it is such a good idea and yeah i'm really really enjoying it and i'm loving the writing style of this one as well first started it it was kind of like the way Bridgerton is to me because it honestly just seemed like the narrator was gossiping about what's going on in this town and it just was giving me the same kind of feeling as the way Bridgerton does but I'm going to continue this book tomorrow I don't know if I'll finish it it is meant to be like thunderstorms here I think but that could maybe motivate me to read a little bit more tomorrow because we've just been quite busy with going like into the town just relaxing you know you know how it is but i will update you whenever i have updates i guess i just finished the hotel nantucket and i came straight back up to my room to grab another book so that is why i am currently chilling on the bed because oh my god the heat here is just it is so so warm and I needed aircon for a moment but this book I flew through this I think it took me two days I didn't really know a lot about this book going into it I honestly thought it was going to be more of a romance but I like I wouldn't classify this as a romance at all there is romantic elements in it but I wouldn't go into it thinking you're gonna get a romance because that might disappoint you it really didn't disappoint me at all like I absolutely loved it I fell in love with each and every one of the characters like they're genuinely real people to me in my head it's just the weirdest thing a lot of the time whenever I read a book I like I connect with the characters but I don't see them as like genuine real people and honestly whenever I think about this book I can like visualize each and every character it's as if I've like watched a reality tv show of them and this kind of felt like reality tv in some moments of this because it is in the third person it's somebody kind of overlooking each scenario that each person is being dealt with and how their life basically is and it just feels like you're kind of snooping on their personal lives which I really enjoyed. I don't mind third person at all. I actually really enjoy it whenever it's done correctly, like this book. And honestly, this is the easiest five stars I think I've given in a very, very long time. I know I'm not going to change my mind, even though I just finished it. It is 100% a five star and I really want to read more of her books now. I don't know like the concept of all of them, but I just know that they're the perfect books to read in the summer. I'm almost scared to start another book in case it's just gonna put me in a slump because this one was so so good like I was so invested with this story it's actually insane like I just would not look at this cover and think to pick it up but it's only because it was recommended by Sarah Crowley that I even thought about this author but I think she has like 30 other books written and I think I heard that she's retiring that could be wrong I don't know if I'm thinking about another person but I mean I have a lot of books to get through of hers I did hear 
that this book is one of her best but I just really enjoyed her writing and I'm so so curious to see what her other books are like. I think now I'm going to pick up the third book in the Chestnut Spring series which is Reckless. I don't actually know who this story is about like which brother it is. I already forget their names. Um, I know one's in the military and I think it might be about him so I'm gonna grab that bring it down and read it a bit later on. We are gonna get some jet skis and probably just chill out for a bit today so yeah I will read then. I actually just read the back of this one because it was still in my like hand luggage bag from the airport. I actually brought the rest of the series with me so if I get really invested in this series again then I'm glad I have the other two books to like just carry on reading. This one is about Theo so he is which one is he? Is he the military one? Where? Yeah. What one is this? I'm confused. I need to double check and see if this is the right one because I don't want to read it in the wrong order. Oh wait. Oh no, it's powerless next. Okay, let me get that. Why did I think that it was about somebody in the military? This next one is about an ice hockey player. Why am I getting honest if I haven't read the first two books? Like for some reason I just forget every other brother in this series. Okay, Jasper. Okay, yes, I remember now. Is he like the brother that is just like a friend of the family? I honestly can't remember, but I'm gonna get back into it and I'm sure I'll remember everything as soon as I read like the first chapter or so. It is quite a big book. Like how many pages is this? 500, like around 500 pages. So I may be reading this one for the next few days. However, the first two books I absolutely flew through because I love them so much. They were both... Well, the first one was a five star and then the second one was a 4.5 star. So we will see how this one goes. I'm really glad that I didn't pick up Reckless because I would have been reading it in the wrong order. And we don't want any spoilers, even though they always end up together. But anyway, I am going to read this and I will update you later on. I am just waffling at this point. So yeah, I will see you then. And honestly, about two days ago, I started to feel really, really sick. I think I have like heat exhaustion, maybe. I was looking up the symptoms because I'm that person that Googles every single thing whenever they're sick. And I think that I have heat exhaustion or like going on to heat stroke, which is not ideal, but we're still having a great time and it's not affecting me too much. I just feel like kind of sick during the day, but that's why I haven't been able to like speak to you guys as much because I'm just kind of nauseous all the time. But anyway, I have been reading quite a lot. I finished, which one was first? It was Powerless first. So I finished that one. Then I went straight into Reckless, which I read in one sitting, basically. I, I think I read that in one day anyway. And now I am on Hopeless. I don't have like overly loads to say about these books in terms of what they're about, because I don't want to like, I don't know if it's going to spoil any of the other ones. I suppose they are interconnected standalones, but they are all based on the same family and the same like brothers, you're basically going through each of the brothers in this series. But the first one, Powerless, this one was about Jasper and Sloane. And Jasper is basically the brother that is kind of adopted into the family. He's not like a blood brother, but he has basically grown up with the Eaton family and is one of them. But he is a very, very famous like ice hockey player. And the main girl, Sloane, is a ballerina. And basically she is in 
a very tough situation with her family. Her dad is very, very emotionally abusive and basically arranged a marriage for her whenever she just did not want to marry him at all. And these two, so Jasper and Sloan, they are like childhood best friends and or enemies, no, childhood best friends to lovers. And I just loved this story so much. I thought that it was just told so well and it is quite a long one. Like it's close to maybe, 450 pages and I honestly could have read so so much more like I really loved this book I loved the characters and I just think this whole world of like Chestnut Springs is so it's like a comfort read at this point I'm absolutely flying through the series and I don't want it to end I really enjoyed this I think overall I gave this one like a 4.5 star it wasn't exactly a 5 star I don't really know why I just didn't get like that five star feeling that I did in Flawless. I think that's the first one. I definitely give that five star because I think it was entering this new world and I just didn't know what to expect. I really, really loved it. But yeah, I fell in love with Jasper and Sloane and I absolutely love them together. Then the next one, Reckless, is about Winter and you will know Winter from the first book because she is Summer's sister and we do see kind of her story a little bit in the first book but she has her own book now and the male love interest in this one is Theo Silva and oh my god, I fell in love with Theo Silva so so much. Like I just loved him as a character. I honestly think he's my favourite one out of all of the book boyfriends. I know a lot of people say that Kate is their favourite but honestly Theo is my absolutely favourite, my absolute favourite so far. I mean it could change because I am currently reading Hopeless and this one is about Bo Eaton and I feel like everybody was waiting for Bo's book whenever this series came out and he is definitely like is just book boyfriend material. I don't want to say too much about this one because I definitely think Winter's story spoils the first one if you haven't read it already but I again loved this book so much I gave this one a 4 to a 4.5 star as well. I really don't know how to rate these books because it's a five star series for me but they're not all five star books but I absolutely love all of them. It's just a really weird feeling because I know they're not five stars but they kind of feel like five stars as well. I really don't know how to rate them but definitely like a high four star or 4.5 star. And as I said, I'm reading Hopeless at the minute and this one's about Bo Eaton. He is like the military brother and he is, I think he's mentioned in every single book, but mainly in the book where I think it was Powerless with Jasper because Jasper and Bo are like the best of friends. And there is a little storyline with Bo and yeah, I'll not give too much away, but it's just really, really nice to finally read his story. And it's fake engagement. And the girl in this hasn't been brought up in any other books. She's called Bailey. She works at like a bar, I'm guessing close to Chestnut Springs. And she's basically had a very, very rough upbringing. Like her family are kind of dodgy like she doesn't have the best of family her brothers are just not the kind of people you want to be associated with and she just wants to get rid of her name basically like she's always judged because she has the same last name as her brothers and people just judge her based on what they're like pretty much so Bo Eaton is basically like the prince of the town like the Eatons are very very much loved in Chestnut Springs and he basically says to her that they should be fake engaged so people view her differently and people will view her as an Eaton instead of what her last name is. I actually forget what her last name is. Um, but anyway, so that is kind of like why they get fake engaged. But obviously there's gonna be feelings involved. I don't know where I'm up to, where am I? page 155 i am loving it so far i didn't read a lot today because i was just feeling so nauseous and yeah i couldn't really focus like i had such a migraine and stuff but i'm really hoping that i feel a bit better tomorrow and i can read if not like finish this one tomorrow because i really wanted to finish it today but i just wasn't feeling it at all i am absolutely loving like the cowboy vibes of a romance so far i do have what is the other book that i have Swift and Saddled, is that right? I definitely have more cowboy romances to read and I know that these books are just like such a guilty pleasure for me. If it's a cowboy romance, I will be reading it from now on. So we do have a few more days left of this holiday, which I'm so excited about, but like I just, I don't wanna go home at all but there is still a few books on my TBR and I'm very excited to get through them all. I will update you hopefully more often. I'm hoping that I'm not feeling like just as I was saying, not the best, but I will 100% update you whenever I go on to my next book. Again, I feel like I can't say too much about the storylines of each of these because I just don't wanna spoil anything. I guess it's not really spoiling, but yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs>
we are gonna head out for dinner tonight we are going to the steak restaurant which we went to like a few days ago and honestly it was so good like we absolutely loved it so we're gonna do that tonight get a few drinks and then come back to the hotel room and get an early night because i just did not sleep well that much last night but yeah i will take you along with me tomorrow and hopefully i get some reading done because i definitely missed it today I just wasn't in the right headspace at all you can definitely tell that i just woke up i feel like my voice is all weird as well but the worst sleep literally ever this migraine has just been awful i'm really like prone to migraines but the air pressure and the humidity here has just like skyrocketed so we think that's why i hope that's why i did have a dream last night that i was dying so mm, the hypochondriac in me was out on show but hopefully not and hopefully whenever we land tomorrow it's completely gone i'm just yeah as i said very prone to migraines but i did finish my last book in the chestnut spring series i feel like i'm gonna just do an overall review at the end whenever i'm back home but today i'm gonna start done and dusted for some reason i thought the first book was swift and saddled or something like that or is that a completely different series i have no idea but i'm gonna start reading this i'm just gonna double check this is the first one but i'm definitely in my like cowboy romance era as you can see i read like mostly cowboy romances this holiday but i'm not planning on stopping anytime soon whenever i get home i really want to get wild love because the main guy in that was mentioned in the last book so that should just be fun and i think it's like billionaire single dads i don't know if all of them are like that but the book that wild love is about he's definitely a billionaire and i heard that he's a single dad like just from other people it wasn't mentioned in like the last book or anything it's just mentioned that he's very very rich i literally have no idea what this one's about i was actually given this one by some of my colleagues because they know that i'm in my cowboy romance era and i've obviously been on my honeymoon so it was kind of like a wee gift for that as well the first little section of this, I'm not going to read it all out because it's huge and my brain just cannot even focus right now. I hope I can actually read this today because I really want to get like one more book in before we leave. But it says here, she's off limits, but he's never been good at following the rules. Dot, dot, dot. Very Mamma Mia. Like the main girl, Clementine, is a horse rider and she's kind of like completed everything she wants to do in life. But it says here that she was in an accident that makes it impossible for her to like ride horses again. And because of that, she has to go back to her hometown, which I'm guessing she is not enjoying. And it says here about the guy that he is the most notorious bad boy, bar owner and bachelor. He's also the unofficial fifth member of the Ryder family. Fifth member? Maybe? Is this the first one? I feel like if we're going to go with all the brothers, etc., then you would go with the oldest. I don't really know. That doesn't make any sense. I guess not. I need to Google it just to make sure. I definitely think this is going to be like a spicy book. I feel like every single romance, or not every single romance, every single cowboy romance is like extreme spice. And especially with like ice hockey romances as well. I feel like it's almost taken over ice hockey romances. But every author I feel like is in their spice era. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I don't mind spice at all. As long as it doesn't take from like the emotional side of the relationship like it still needs to be believable so i will update you on this i'm gonna google it just in case this isn't the first one okay i just googled it and this is the first one i think it said it's the blue ranch series rebel Bl rebel blue ranch i don't know i just can't speak today but yeah we're gonna start reading this today and i will take you along with me hopefully i finish it today that would be really really satisfying mm -hmm. 